Hello and welcome to the cakes tutorial on how to make this upside down ice cream cake. This cake was made for Quinn and this is a special video for her um, as her mum said that she likes to watch bake along videos so a special shout out to Quinn, hope you had a lovely birthday and hope you enjoyed your cake. Here's how to make it. So we're starting off with the board. This is a 10 inch board and I've just got a paintbrush and I'm brushing on a little bit of water and that just makes the board tacky so that the fondant that we use to cover it will stick. So I'm just making sure it's got a nice even coverage. And then in that pot there I have some corn flour. So I'm laying out corn flour that stops the fondant from sticking to my board. And then I've got a lovely pastel purple lilac colour. So I'm just rolling that out as evenly as I can to the size of the board. Now I do have a little air bubble there as you may be able to see. So you just want to get yourself a little pin making sure that it's sterilised and clean um, and get rid of any air bubbles that you may have popping up. And then I'm just checking that that will cover my board, folding the fondant over my pin and then folding it onto the board and just making sure that it definitely gets out to the edges. Then I'm grabbing my fondant smoother and you just want to go over the top of that board to make sure that the fondant is nice and smooth, there's no lumps and bumps and it's got a nice even coverage. That's my daughter just bringing me a unicorn. <laughs> you may have seen it pop up in the corner there. Then once you're happy that that's smooth, just use a sharp knife to go around the edge and cut off any of the excess. So the next part is to create Quinn's name on the fondant board. For that I'm using sweet stamps. So you just lay them, you can move them around, check where you want them to go. Quinn has two N's in her name and there's only one N in the set so I'm just checking the spacing on that. And then you put the stamp board on top, press evenly and lift off. Once you're happy with that, pop your stampers back and wait for it to dry. Once that's dried, I'm about to use the rainbow dust. This one is rose and you mix that with a little bit of alcohol because the alcohol dries a lot quicker than water. So you put it into a liquid and start hand painting. So I did two layers of this rainbow dust and then I use some edible glitter just to sprinkle over the top at the end to give it a finishing touch. Once you're happy with all of that then you put the board to the side and we can get on with the cake. Okay so Quinn's cake was a chocolate sponge and here I have some chocolate buttercream. I'll put a link uh, to the recipe for those at the top it's in another video of mine which was a live chocolate nest um, so it's exactly the same recipe um, but it's you put it into larger tins instead of the the cupcake cases so that link will appear at the top now so with Quinn's cake I've it's six inches um, each of the sponges I've just put a little cake card underneath and that allows me to build it up and then be able to move the cake afterwards so I've put down a layer of sponge, then I'm layering up the buttercream and I'm putting it on trying to make it as even as possible with my palette knife there. And then we're going to layer that all the way up until we get to the top. So this is my last layer. So again I'm just making sure that there's buttercream spread on top. And you can see there's lots of buttercream coming out the sides now. So with my palette knife, I'm just going to start going around the edge of the cake and smoothing out all of that excess buttercream. Cream. 
And now I'm going to start filling in all of those extra gaps with all of the leftover buttercream that I have. Just making sure that the, it's got a nice smooth edge and this also crumb coats so it traps any of those crumbs as we don't want those showing on the outer layer, especially as this is going to be a light coloured cake. Um, so just getting it as smooth as we can. I will change the angles on the next layer just so you can see a little bit clearer what I'm doing. But I'm basically just going around and filling in all of those gaps. Once you're happy with that and it's finished and you've made sure that it's all nice and smooth and level, then it's just a case of popping it in the fridge. I usually leave mine in there for at least an hour and then that way the buttercream goes a lot firmer, ready for the next layer. So I'm just using my metal scraper to go around and make sure it's got that really smooth finish. You want this to be as flat as possible. And then levelling off the top. And then into the fridge it goes. Okay, so this cake has been in the fridge for an hour now. Um, so it's firmed up the buttercream. And I'm now doing a layer of white chocolate ganache. So the chocolate ganache is part cream, part white chocolate. So it's three parts white chocolate to one part cream. And that just makes it soft enough to be able to put on. Now this is going to be an under layer. So I'm not too worried about some of the brown that's coming off. I knew that would happen. Um, I'm putting a watercolour effect in two different colour ganaches on top of this. So this is just to firm up the cake. Um, and to give me more of a, a white lighter base um, for those colours to go on. If I were to put the purple and pink ganache straight on top, um, then the, the brown colour would seep through. So this is just to make sure that none of that brown shows through in the final cake. So as I say, this is white chocolate ganache. It sets a lot firmer than buttercream. Um, so I quite like using it on the outside of the cakes. Um, and I'm just doing the, the same as what I did before. So I'm just going around layering it up um, with my palette knife. And then I'll get my um, scraper, as you can see there. And I'm just going around the edge to give it a nice, flat, smooth surface. Once I'm happy with this, this will go back into the fridge. It doesn't have to be in there for as long as the buttercream does because ganache firms up a lot quicker than buttercream. So I'll probably say about 15 minutes. Give it half an hour if you can probably, but 15 minutes is usually fine. Um, and I'm just making sure that the top is leveled here as well. Okay, so now I'm doing the next layer and I wanted a watercolour effect for this. So I'm using Pro Gels. Um, I've got pink going into this ganache here. Um, and you really do only need a small bit of this. Um, the colouring is really strong. So I'm just mixing in and I don't know if you can see, but I've just put a little drop on the side of my bowl so I can mix in gradually and I don't have to keep going back to the tube. So I'm just pulling little bits off and getting to the colour that I want. And this is going into white chocolate ganache here. So I'm just colouring some more of that white chocolate ganache. I'm quite happy with that colour and I'm going to be using these sprinkles at the end as well. So I'm just going to set those to the side. And then I've also coloured some um, lilac white chocolate ganache there as well. Um, and I used the purple Pro Gel for that. Just a very small amount of it. So I've got more of the lilac colour. I'm going to layer that up first. And give the cake a good even coverage of that. So I'm working around with my palette knife. Now once I've got an even layer of the lilac, I'm using my scraper to go around the edge. 
again just to try and make it smooth now with white chocolate ganache because it's going onto a cold cake it does start to set already if that happens I have a metal scraper so what I do is I just run it under some really hot water or boil the kettle and dip it into a bowl um, and then that heats up your scraper so that when you go around the ganache it smooths it off and warms it up at the same time and that means that you can get it that a little bit smoother so it's just a case of keep wiping off the excess keep going around the edge with your hot or warm scraper and getting that smoother it doesn't need to be perfect at the moment because I am going to be putting the pink uh, ganache on top as well um, but I just want to get it fairly smooth at this stage okay so I'm fairly happy with that so now I'm going to be bringing in my pink and I'm just going to be putting little bits around the bottom bits around the top where there's any gaps and then a couple of little splodges in the middle and this is going to create that watercolor effect so I'm just putting them on and then I'll use my metal scraper to drag those around and create that effect so you'll start to see that show in a moment I'm not worrying too much about the top of the cake because we are going to be covering that in a drip so I will even that out at the end but I'm focusing more on the style of the sides at the minute so I'm just filling in any extra gaps and putting in more pink where I feel like it's not showing enough and that just gives it that effect a little bit more there so this is just by eye and it depends entirely what you want the finished cake to look like but you want to smooth it out because you still want a smooth finish um, and then you can always go back and add more once you're happy with how smooth that is and the color that you have just go back with your palette knife and we just need to take all of those edges off again you might need to warm up your palette knife with a bit of hot water um, to allow this to be as smooth as you can get it and we're on to the next stage okay so I have this blue food coloring from color splash I'm just popping that in this is crumbled cake and I'm used vanilla sponge for this part um, and I'm just going to give that a little mix to try and make the cake crumbs appear a little bit more blue And then I've just got some blue buttercream, again using the colour splash. And I'm going to mix the crumbs in gradually and this is just to combine them all together. As this is going to be the base of our ice cream. So I can get a few more in there, so I'm going to put those in too. And you're looking for this to be a texture where they stick together. But it's not soggy. Okay, so I'm quite happy with that there. And you want to push that and squeeze it into a tight ball and then I'm just using a wafer cone to check how big I need that to be now I want this to be quite a big melty ice cream so I'm just going to keep checking make sure that's all together and then that excess I'm just going to put into the base of the cone and fill that up with all of that cakey goodness as well now because this is going in the cone the cone's going to hold it together so it doesn't matter if this is a little bit looser because we can really squidge it down so popping all of that into the base of the cone and once i've done that i'm just going to leave them both to the side for the moment and bring back the cake So I've just brought back the board that we made earlier, got some piping gel and I'm just going to lay that up where I want the cake to go. You don't need loads, just enough so that the cake sticks to the board. And then because it's ganache, we can lift that across. And then I've coloured some more ganache blue um, and I'm just going to roughly coat now it does have to be rough at this moment it doesn't have to be perfect because we're going to fill in a lot of those gaps once it's actually on the cake 
but I'm just getting the ganache across our vanilla ice cream let's call it ice cream now because it's turning into ice cream isn't it okay okay so I've got some softer chocolate ganache now in a piping bag and I'm just working around and letting that drip down each side to create that chocolate drip effect And then to fill in the edge, I'm just going to do a little swirl, making sure that I'm keeping back some of that ganache to tidy up the ice cream afterwards. And then I'm just using a little teaspoon to spread that around and create the effect on top. Now I wanted this to look like the chocolate had melted, so I wanted it to be a little bit rougher than usual. Um, so I'm kind of putting little dints into it as well as smoothing it around. I didn't want it to be perfectly smooth. Um, but you do need to make sure that it lines up to the drips on the edge. Then once you're happy with that, I'm just going to grab our vanilla ice cream and place that where I want it to go on top of the cake. Then I've just got a little skewer and I'm going to trim that down and pop it into the cone. And that just gives it a bit more stability. So it's holding the cone on top of our ice cream. So I'm just trimming that down and popping it on top. And then we're going to use the remainder of our piped ganache just to fill in any of those gaps and then really make sure that the ice cream is the shape that you want it to be. And it also allows you to kind of merge this into the drip at the bottom. So it really looks like that ice cream's melting onto your cake. And I'm just using the spoon to get that messy look then once you're happy with that bring across the sprinkles I've got some lovely little pastel colors here in pinks blues and silvers I'm sprinkling that all around the top and across the ice cream and it's just a case of placing them where you think they look pretty I've got a mix of size of the sprinkle balls here, so I just wanted to make sure that I had a mix of the larger and smaller as well. Um, and it might just be that you have to place a few particular sprinkles where you'd like them to be. So for me, I always think it looks quite pretty having some down the sides of the drips as well. So I'll go back to that. We've got some meringues, which I've painted the purple onto them to give them a bit of a jazzy effect with edible paint. Um, and I'm just sticking that one onto the board with a bit more of that piping gel. Then we've got some marshmallows. Once you're happy with the top, I'm just getting some more of that piping gel and doing about an inch around the bottom of the cake. And we're going to stick all of our sprinkles onto this at the bottom as well. Now this bit does get messy. Sprinkles are very difficult to control. Um, so just do it the best you can. I just went for it really. So just pop them on, move them to where you want them to go. And we can always clear up the board afterwards. Then for the final touch for Quinn, 
One of her favourite characters is Raven from Tea Titans. So I've just printed that off onto um edible icing sheet and I'm sticking that on with a little bit of water. And here's the final cake. So thank you very much for watching. Happy birthday to you again, Quinn. I hope you really enjoyed the tutorial too. Um, please give this a like if you enjoyed it. Feel free to leave any comments and do subscribe to see all of my other tutorials. Go and check them out on my page now. Thanks for joining me. Happy birthday and goodbye.